You know, that's the funny thing of, about physics and biology. The dream of physicists in the 20th century and, and maybe this century is to discover th the theory of everything. And there's a sense by that once you discover that theory, you will understand everything. If we unlock the mysteries of how the universe works, would we be able to understand how life emerges from that fabric of the universe that we understand? I think the phrase theory of everything is very misleading <laughs> because it's uh, used to describe a theory which unifies the um, three laws of microphysics, electricity, magnetism, and weak interaction with gravity. So it's an uh, important step forward for particle physicists. But the lack of such a theory doesn't hold up any other scientists. Anyone doing biology or most of physics is not held up at all through not understanding subnuclear physics. They're held up because they're dealing with things that are very complicated. Mm -hmm. And that's especially true of anything biological. So what's holding up biologists is not a lack of a so-called theory of everything. Uh, it's the inability to understand things which are very complicated. What do you think we'll understand first? how the universe works or how the human body works deeply, like from a fundamental deep level? Well, I think, um, and perhaps we can come back to it later, that there are only limited prospects of ever being able to understand with unaided human brains the most fundamental theories linking together all the forces of nature. I think that may be a limitation of the human brains. Um, but I also uh, think that um, we can perhaps aided by computer simulations, um, understand a bit more of the complexity of nature. But uh, even understanding a simple organism from the atom up is very, very difficult. And I think extreme reductionists have a very misleading perception. They tend to think that, uh, um, in a sense, we are all solutions of Schrodinger's equation, etc. Um, but that isn't the way we'll ever understand anything. Uh, it may be true that we are reductionists in the sense that we believe that that's the case. We don't believe in any special life force in living things. But nonetheless, no one thinks that we can understand a living thing by solving Schrodinger's equation. To take a, an example which isn't as complicated, lots of people study the flow of fluids like water, why waves break, why flows go turbulent, things like that. This is a serious branch of applied mathematics and engineering. And in doing this, you have concepts of uh, viscosity, turbulence, and things like that. Now, you can understand quite a lot about how water behaves and how waves break in terms of those concepts. But the fact that any breaking wave is a solution of Schrodinger's equation for tens of 30 particles, even if you could solve that, which you clearly can't, would not give you any insight. So the important thing is that every science has its own irreducible concepts in which you get the best explanation. Uh, so it may be in chemistry, it's things like valence. Um, in bi bi biology, the concepts in cell biology. Um, and in uh, ecology, there are concepts like imprinting, etc. And in psychology, there are other concepts. So in a sense, the sciences are like a tall building where you have basic physics, the most fundamental, then the rest of physics, then chemistry, then cell biology, etc., all the way up to the, uh, I guess, economists in the penthouse and all that. Um, <laughs> and we have that. Um, and that's true in a sense, but it's not true that it's like a building in that it's made unstable by an unstable base. Because if you're a chemist, biologist, or an economist, you're facing challenging problems, but they're not made any worse by uncertainty about subnuclear physics. And at every level, just because you understand the rules of the game or have a, yep. some understanding of the rules of the game doesn't uh, mean you know what kind of beautiful things that game creates. Right. So uh, if you're interested in um, birds and how they fly, uh, then things like uh, um, imprinting, the baby on the mother and all that and uh, things like that are what you need to understand. Um, you couldn't even in principle 
yeah. solve this very good equation, how an albatross wanders for thousands of miles in the Southern Ocean and comes back and then coughs up food for its young. Uh, that, that's something we can understand in a sense and uh, predict the behavior, but it's not because we can solve it on the atomic scale.